Hey guys, Lou here. Welcome back to Acorn Hill. It is springtime in North Carolina. We're now kicking it into gear. We are enjoying warmer temperatures, but also on the low humidity side. And I wanted to thank everybody who's been very nice to us and giving us good feedback regarding our new uh, homegrown series here on the channel. For those of you who are just joining us and have stumbled on the channel, I have created a series where I am tackling our problematic area in our property. It has been a waterlogged area, nothing grows on it, and so I figured this year I am taking it on, I'm owning it. I am creating a new garden bed, not only for mixed herbaceous perennials, but also to border and give me a platform for our new vegetable garden. Last time I posted, which is the first of the series, is I showed you how I came up with the cedar raised garden beds. And today what I'd like to show um, is how we fill it up and we fill it in with organic compost that I ordered from uh, a certified organic compost producer locally in the area. Many things I had to consider in creating this new garden bed for vegetables. Number one, scale. Number two, I want it to be symmetrical. I want it to be easy for me to access and even for cat to uh, go and harvest some vegetables. We'll be growing some pick your own and let them grow again type of vegetables that I want to make sure we're able to access them without overreaching, without tripping over, that kind of stuff. Number three, I wanted to make sure that when we grow them, we grow them organically. We also want to make sure that these are high yield tasty and um, just things that we like eating for our household. The last variable or factor that I wanted to consider for building this and for the planting medium itself is I want it to be economical and I want it to be practical. One of the things that will really eat up one's budget when they're building a garden bed is the amount of soil and the amount of uh, expenditure that one has to chuck out of uh, to buy these organic compost. They are economical price-wise on my view, but uh, I wanted still to make sure that we extend the practicality of this growing medium. And so for today, and I'm very excited to uh, share this with you guys because I've been doing this during my early gardening years and I have no idea what it's called. It's a term called Oogle Kultur. Fancy term, right? Well, let me explain it and break it down for us. Hugel Kultur means hill culture or hill mound. It's literally a raised garden bed that is built from the bottom up with logs, sticks and branches, wood chips, grass clippings, manure, leaves, food scraps, eggshells, coffee mounds, practically everything you would put into a compost heap. Top it all off with a layer of topsoil or compost and then you're ready to plant on top of it. In other words, what we will have is the raw composition and raw ingredients for compost right on the bottom layer. We will top it up with some topsoil and for the majority of the content of this raised garden bed, it will be the compost that I ordered from our local source. This is another exciting prospect for me because last year when I did my lawn renovation project and I stripped the entire backyard and property of all these weeds, unnecessary grass and vegetation, I have bagged them up. And there was a reason why I had to do that last year. I had about 13 big construction black bags sitting on the back of our property in order for that to decompose and turn into leaf mold. Some of them have really, majority of them have really really uh, decomposed and have provided me with good soil with a lot of nitrogen in it and so that's what I will be using not only for my raised garden bed for the vegetables but I have been using it also on, on the garden bed that I have built alongside uh, my neighbor's property line and so that will be a different vlog and a different post altogether that I will share with you guys in due time but right now time to do and prepare and learn about Oogle Coulter. The way I built my Oogle Coulter raised bed is pretty straightforward. What I did was after I built the uh, cedar garden raised bed, I placed cardboard right on top of the existing grass. This is to make sure that no other weeds and no other grass can live underneath the uh, material that I will be putting over it. I wet the cardboard really, really well. Some people use old carpeting, old cotton towels, hessian or, or burlap anything biodegradable and natural fabric so that when it decomposes it will just uh, be absorbed by the soil underneath. 
And so here we go, moving on to the second layer of my Oogle culture. What you see here are clippings, old grass clippings and old twigs, anything that has been laying in the back corner of our property for about a year. This has uh, partially decomposed and what I'm doing here is I'm packing this thing, packing this baby up to the bottom and I will be also wetting this material so that it'll get a little bit more flexible and we can eliminate all those open areas and all those negative spaces. Also putting in some fresh branches, um, fresh cuttings from uh, the trimmings that I did in, in the early winter. But for this bed, this is a three by three uh, bed. The size is easy for me because I can access the produce on all sides. We can kneel on it, we can stoop over it, we can just cut and, and harvest as we go along. So this will, uh, over time, will decompose, will provide a lot of the nitrogen and the carbon that we need that will be absorbed by all the micronutrients that are already built into the organic compost that we will put on top of it. I tell you guys, this application couldn't be easier. And apart from really using up and recycling all these viable uh, raw materials that I have, it also saves me on soil, which if I were to put a lot of soil in here, half of the soil really, in reality, I could use for other garden beds or other containers or other planting applications that I have in mind. And here on this clip, I just wanted to make mention again how nice looking that corner, that dovetail corner uh, that I built uh, in preparing for this garden bed. All those little details, I think, make this garden application, this raised garden bed, uh, a lot better to look at. And again, that strong corner is also reinforced by the metal tie that I've already screwed on the inside part of this garden bed. After packing half of the raised garden bed with all this raw material, it I began to water the entire thing using a watering can or a garden hose. Then next comes the fun part. I started stomping this thing like I'm stomping grapes in a big grape vat. And the obvious idea is to pack them down even further so we could contain more soil and get as much quality of ugl culture as we can as they start decaying underneath. After I finish doing the two-step on top of this raw material, it's time to put a bag of topsoil. I have this one laying around for maybe oh, two months or so, and I figured I'd start using it as well and make it more productive. I placed this as the first layer on top of the green and brown materials. There's another garden bed that I wanted to show you in a little bit, and that's rectangular in shape. But right now, I want you to see this heap of black construction bag materials that I've filled with dried up grass clippings and dried up uh, pruned materials that I did late winter into early spring. The grass materials have been there since September and they have really decayed well and have turned naturally into loam. Each construction bag has produced either loam or leaf mold. Both are ready to be used in the garden. This combination of loam and leaf mold material is what I use for the next layer right over the top soil. Then after this, for the final layer and the most important part of this raised garden bed, is shoveling in a good amount of compost. The compost that we're using here is organic. I know it is a challenging thing to allow a garden to be 100% sustainable and organic, but I do my little bit and with research, I was able to find a U.S. Composting Council certified compost provider and supplier here in my area. After finishing and filling up the two square raised garden beds, it's time to move on to the rectangular garden beds that I made. I'm sure that by now we have a better idea of how Hugel Coulter works. Basically we have that compost, that building blocks for compost underneath all the soil that we wanted to use for planting. And just to review as a little refresher, what I like is twigs, bark, tree branches, uh, grass clippings, uh, old leaves, anything that can be decomposed over time. Brown and green materials are the main ingredients of compost and I like using a ratio 2 to 1. Two parts brown material and one part green material. 
Apart from building this section of our property for vegetables, applying the principle of Ogle Coulter, I also am applying what's called a no-dig gardening. Now, no-dig can be done Literally, it means you're not digging and turning over the soil, and that is really what I want. All these microorganisms can be naturally enhanced and naturally triggered once you put a good layer of uh, brown and green material and the compost on top of it, which is basically contained by the raised garden bed. So, all in all, I'm very happy with this venture. Overall, I was able to build three rectangular garden beds that measure six feet by three feet and two individual square raised garden beds that measure three feet by three feet so there's a lot of versatility there's a lot of uh, accessibility and being able to move about and move around giving us the efficiency and the productivity that we want for our first year of gardening vegetables thanks again guys for joining me on this video this is part two of our channel's vegetable garden growing series thank you for allowing me to share with you how i built this garden area and as you can see i have a lot more work to do the next thing that i will share with you is how we will irrigate this area i have hooked them up on automatic drip system and so on the next installment on this series i will share with you the basics on how to apply assemble and operate a drip irrigation system for any style of planting application planting bed garden bed etc for those of you who are just joining us on the channel, welcome to Acorn Hill. This is our property in North Carolina. It is about gardening at the moment, but really overall, it's about caring for the earth, caring for our blessings and becoming a better steward of what we have. So would you do me a favor and click on that subscribe button? There's a lot more ideas that I'm willing to share and hopefully we can all learn something new as we move along through the growing season of 2021. For now, this is Louie. Thanks again for your time, and we'll see you back here at our vegetable garden for more Acorn Hill homegrown here in Acorn Hill. Bye-bye for now.